Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today's lesson is about the Pythagorean Theorem and how to use it. And before this lesson's over, you sure better understand what the hypotenuse is. This guy's pretty amazing. He's a mathematician that lived 2,500 years ago. And he came up with a theory that's proved so useful and so valuable that 2,500 years later, virtually every kid in school is asked to memorize it. That's amazing. The guy's name is Pythagoras. His theorem is the Pythagorean theorem. And it tells us about the a relationship between the lengths of the sides in a right triangle. Here's a nice right triangle. And we can tell that because we put a little square in the corner, meaning that this angle is a 90 degree angle. Opposite that right angle is side C in this triangle. And that's always known as the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. Now what Pythagoras told us was that the length of side A squared plus the length of side B squared equals the length of side C squared. Another way to say that is the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Now you're going to soon discover this is a really powerful little bit of information. Well, let's see how this might be helpful. Let's say we had a triangle and we knew that one side was 6 inches in length. Another side was 15 inches in length. We knew it was a right triangle because it had that little square in the corner. But we didn't know the length of the hypotenuse. Well, Pythagoras would tell us that the square of the length of the hypotenuse equaled the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So we could just insert the information from our, our problem into the Pythagorean equation and figure out what we didn't know. We could say that x squared equaled 15 squared plus 6 squared. Now we just do the math x squared equals 225 plus 36, or x squared equals 261. Now, I can take the square root of both sides of this equation, and it's still an equation. So I can say that x equals the square root of 261. If I plug that in my calculator, I can come up with an answer. x equals 16.16. If I didn't have a calculator, I could still estimate the answer. I could fool around a while and then figure out that 16 squared equals 256 and 17 squared equals 289. And 261 is closer to 16 squared than it is to 17 squared, but it's bigger than 16 squared. So we'd estimate that x equals approximately 16.2. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. We're asked to figure out what the length of the hypotenuse is in this right triangle. And we know that the Pythagorean theorem says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's substitute the information that we're given. x squared, the hypotenuse squared, equals 11 squared plus 9 squared. Or x squared equals 121 plus 81. Or x squared equals 202. Or x equals the square root of 202. And the square root of 202 is approximately 14.21 centimeters. You try this one. Hit your pause button. 
Figure out what x equals, and then hit your forward key to check your answer. Well, we're asked to figure out what x is, but this time, x is not the hypotenuse of this right triangle. It's one of the two sides. So it'll solve a little bit differently. The, the Pythagorean theorem is the same. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or side a squared plus side b squared equals the length of the hypotenuse squared. Now let's substitute what we know. We'll say that x squared plus 8 squared equals 9.43 squared. Or x squared plus 64 equals 88.92. We'll subtract 64 from both sides of this equation. And we'll know that x squared equals 24.92. x equals the square root of 24.92. Or x equals approximately 5 centimeters. Here's another one. Try to figure out what x is. Well, I hope you figured this one out. It took a little bit of thinking, I bet. Because we don't have a right triangle here. We've got a non-right triangle. And we know a bit about it. We know that the area of this triangle is 50 square inches. And we know that the height of this triangle is 5 inches. And we're supposed to figure out what the length of one of the sides is. But it's not a right triangle. No, it's not a right triangle. It's two right triangles. There's a right triangle on the left side of this and another right triangle on the right side of this. This larger triangle is two right triangles pushed together. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We know what the height is. The height's the same as in the original. It's five inches. But we don't know the base, and we don't know the hypotenuse. We can figure out the base, though, at least for the larger triangle. We know that the area of the larger triangle is 50 square inches, and the height is 5 inches. So we know that the area equals 0.5 times the length of the base times the height. If we substitute 50 square inches for the area, and 5 inches for the height, we've got 50 equals 0.5 times b times 5, or b equals 20. Well, in our right triangles, the base is half the base in the original triangle, so the bases of our right triangles are 10 inches in length. Now we know the height and the base, and we don't know the hypotenuse, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And it'll tell us that 5 squared plus 10 squared equals x squared. Or 25 plus 100 equals x squared. x squared equals 125. And x equals 11.18 inches. Hit your pause button and try this one. This is a right triangle, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for x. My hypotenuse is the square root of 10. So my Pythagorean theorem would read the square root of 10 squared equals x squared plus x plus 2 squared. The square root of 10 squared equals 10. x plus 2 squared equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. So 10 equals x squared plus x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now I want to solve this, so I want to set it equal to 0, which means I've got to move that 10 to the right side of the equation. I'm also going to combine some like terms. And when I do all that, it's going to read 0 equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. Now I'll divide both sides of the equation by 2, and 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. I'll factor x squared plus 2x minus 3, and I get 0 equals x plus 3 times x minus 1. 
So, I've got two potential solutions. Either x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0. And that means that either 1 or minus 3 has to equal x. Now it couldn't be minus 3. The length of one of the sides of this triangle couldn't be a negative number. So my answer is x equals 1. Well that's our lesson on the Pythagorean Theorem. I hope it makes sense to you and I hope you're going to find it useful. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find some worksheets and quizzes there that will help make sure you understand the Pythagorean Theorem. I hope we see you again soon. See ya!